I wanna be the best in the game, invest in my name Check no restraints, I'm obsessed with the pain I ingest, I retain, assess and I change Possessed by the thought I'll be free one day From society's restraints, money, clout and fame Mud disease, a plague, we all love to hate Have to play the game Let's talk about sneaky links In college What about him? Are we sneaking? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like sneaky links are fun in a sense For me, my... Sneaky links don't work because my household too close, so it's like one of those you see you walking in, walking out. But I feel like they're fun hearing people's stories. I done had a few sneaky links, man, when I was out like, there wilding out, but you just gotta understand that ain't the way to go no more. It's more stressful when you sneaking, and then you think you sneaking, right? But you know, shy about that, think you sneaking, sneaking. So she's playing you out there. You think it's a sneaky link, but you know, y'all ain't communicate that with y'all, so. She got that telephone, yeah, I fuck with Buddy. And they just, oh, I mess with Buddy. And they just like, yeah, okay. So now, I ain't no sneaky link no more. Now I'm going to find you know here about you. <laughs> you know, uh, that when I was single, you already know what time it was. It was going to be booty, booty o'clock hours. I'm going to wear the gray sweats, mm -hmm. either the pants or the shorts, white tee, hoodie, and the slides. You know what I came here to do. Like, no. What do I have to hide? You know what I came here to do, huh? Yeah, you know what I came here to do. You know, of course I have enough sneaky links for real. People fall in love these days. Mm. <laughs> and it's like, I'm just too lazy for all that shit, bro. Like, I'm just gonna walk through the front, front door, bro. Like, I'll be sneaking. I have the best roommate. We've been roommates for three years now. She does not give a shit. Like, I've had guys in and out. She's right next to the door, too, so she hears every single time that a guy would come in. Not since I've been in a relationship. Not since I've been in a relationship, but before that, she would hear every single time the police would come in, and she was just like, I would talk to her and I'd be like, you hear anything? She was like, I put my earbuds in. I was like, okay. You, you want anything? I'll make sure to clean the kitchen. She's like, okay. See you later. See you after class. She's like, ain't nothing wrong with getting busy. You just gotta keep your business. And when you get busy, you're busy. Exactly. You know, people don't know how to do it. You know, so without watching it on the sneaky link, we just gonna, I'm finding my wife right now. I want my mom. What are y'all thoughts on hookup culture then? I know you guys kind of spoke about that, but what, especially in college, because you know, that is a huge thing in college. I feel like that's kind of promoted. So what's y'all's thoughts on that? I feel like it's really romanticized and kind of portrayed in a like, oh, everyone sits there and hooks up in college. Like, people go crazy. <laughs> but I, I really see a little bit of Yeah, no, I think that's a dangerous game because you don't know what this one night hookup just hooked up with the night before or the day of. Mm -mm. Uh, so I can catch my FGD, but hey, hey, I'm telling my testimony. We were hooking up. We were hooking up. Don't do it, boy. Don't do it. I'm telling you, do not <laughs> do it. You know, when I was younger, I used to always want to like, it was crazy thought. I was like, yeah, I would love to have a girl who I just had sex with, but we had no like relations or no emotional value or anything. I don't know why I wanted that because when I started doing that, the sex was a little, a little sorry because you no, know, it's not intimate, bro. It ain't no real, no real like emotions towards it. You just having sex. She just getting thrashed. So that's why I was trash, bro. <laughs> she, you was slick, bro. She was a slick emo, bro. But like, but like oh. I just learned that sex is better when there's emotions involved. For sure. Also, it's less stress to like balance just hooking up. Like if you have one partner. That's all you have to worry about is that one partner instead of like messing with, you know, uh, six females and you gotta, you know, deal with different emotions from six different women that saying different things, problems. That's why I, I had to stop, bro. I stopped myself in my chest and said, we're gonna reevaluate, we're gonna find my wife. I feel like hookup culture is just weird because it's like, like you said, there's the one in the spectrum where it's just like overly romanticized and too much emphasis is put on it. Where it's like, you know, sex is cool, but it's not everything. And then there's the other end of the spectrum where, you know, people want to condemn people for doing it. And it's like, 
For some people, that's just what they want in that moment. And it's just like, you know, find a nice yeah. little medium, you know what I'm saying? That's valid. That's valid. Like, I think we need to get out of the whole mindset of hookup culture being negative, like having a negative conversation because it's so many, especially with women. Yeah. Like, it's so many times where, like, you'll hear a story about, like, a female friend or whatever that she's telling you in confidence, like, oh, I hooked up with this guy last night. Mm-hmm. And, like, as guys, sometimes we get caught in that whole mindset of, oh, I'm a judge. Like, oh, you hooked up with bruh, you, you nasty. Like, what, what you got going on when it's like, okay, I could have been doing the same thing last night, but no one would be judging me in that negative way. Unless it was, like, a female who felt some type of way towards you. You see what I'm saying? Like, it's two different sides of the coin, and it's wrong that it's like that. Yeah. But even, in, it's like, with that, though, there's still to a certain extent of hookup, because, like, you can hook up, just make sure that you are hooking up, but still being clean, because that's another thing, like, people be like, oh, she hooked up with so-and-so, this person, this person, but it's not, sometimes the judgment is not even coming from the hookup, it's the fact that you hooked up with three people in one day. So it's just like making sure that you're still, if this is what you're doing, still staying clean because that's somebody else that you're dealing with. That's somebody else's life that you're dealing with when it comes to, yes, hook up, but clean. Yeah, but yeah, like, we if you're not clean, you can't be like wild dog and three women because you'd be surprised what I, people I, are doing. Hey, hey, I'm sorry. I didn't get it. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> But you gotta be wrong about three women because it's a chance that one of them are probably not just having sex with you because you're not just having sex with them. Right. Yeah. So like, come on, bro. You have sex with multiple people. Protect your energy, bro. Everybody can't have you, bro. Yeah. It don't matter what you're doing. Just stay clean while you're doing it at this point. Just protect your energy, bro. Hey, the best, the key is no sex at all, bro. Sex, no sex to me. I say do your hookups because why not? Everybody should have a do the hookup culture in college. Why not? The only thing is, don't hook up so much that you go up to somebody and say, have I talked to you? Because that yeah. is a bad experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm definitely, 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 definitely. No way going crazy like that. <laughs> yeah. Now, I didn't really like, I didn't have some drunk nights where I didn't try some women and have them remember it. And then, like, I didn't met the woman while I was sober and was like, trying to get the numbers like, you already like, trying to talk to me, bro. I'm like, nah, I don't. I'm sorry. I'm a little drunk, but you mature. <laughs> is cheating a deal breaker? Yes. No. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like, yeah. Yeah. Is it no. when you're in the relationship or was it because of a past relationship? Mm. Well, you can speak on both. But I was asking as far as like if you're in a relationship right now. So if your boyfriend were to cheat on you. Yeah. Like. I feel like we can all answer that of like, yeah, why would you cheat on me? But I feel like you never know what you're going to do until you're in that situation. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying that to be like, oh, yeah, I take a cheater back. Because in my head, I'm like, no, you do this one time, you want it done, because who knows you'll do it again. But I feel like depending on like when you're in the situation, to what, it, and I don't want to be like to what extent, but everybody classifies cheating as something different. So yeah, I feel like it comes down to, what would you, it's like, what would you do in a situation that you're in? Because, like, I'm going to say you cheating if you looking at somebody funny. But then I'm just like, you know, I'm just kidding. I'm not really like that. But I'm just saying, like, it, I feel like it all just comes down to the situation and when it happens, how it happens. And is that something you want to get over or you don't want to get over? But I feel like people shouldn't have to settle for being like, oh, I was cheated on you. I'm going to take them back. Because some people do feel like I have to take this person back even though I cheated on them. They cheated on them. Cheating on me, brother. So I'm the oddball in these situations. I say cheating is not the deal breaker, but it's not the deal breaker if we're honest. So like, per se, this woman, <laughs> this young woman cheats on me, and uh, let's say she kissed a man, and she comes to me and she says, "Hey, I'm gonna tell you something. I kissed a man." Now, of course, I will be mad. I'm not saying that I'm not gonna consider like, like being over it. But after I start thinking emotionally and start thinking logically, I mean, I'm gonna be mad, but I can just, I'm gonna I'm understand, man, I understand, like, I might not be the only man who you are attracted to, I might not be the only man who tempts you, or, you know, of course, in the perfect world, that would not happen, but, like, people do that. And you are a human, you might act on your decision. Now, I don't know how you let your 
emotions and your attraction to get that far, that's the part that's really the deal breaker. But it's just like I can't fault you for like just acting on human, you know, instinct really. Not I'm not saying it's human instinct to cheat, but it's at least human instinct to be attracted to people. Now your actions that's another thing I might have to consider, but I wouldn't say it's like a complete deal breaker. Like if you cheat it's over. It's just all situational like uh millennium was saying that. Um it's a deal breaker for me. But something that I really want to get at is like I feel like and I know this is kind of deviating from the main question right now, but it's like I think that people who take back people who cheat need to be looked at at a different light and stuff like that because it's like, you know what I'm saying? Just because that's something that you wouldn't do doesn't mean that you should condemn them for it. You know what I'm saying? Because you don't necessarily know their situation or why they took them back or why that person cheated. You know what I'm saying? Now, if they with a habitual cheater, then it's like, okay, yeah, you're crazy. Like, uh, but if it's like a one-time thing and like they work through it and they fine, then you know, then the cool that's you. You know what I'm saying? More power to you. I don't know for me, you know, that ain't me because it's like, I know I wouldn't cheat and it's just the embarrassment of it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because it's like, you know, why y'all broke up? Yeah, she cheated or he cheated. Like, that shit is way heavy. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. That's another thing. You know, a lot of people don't talk about how cheating is uh, the start's mental. Like, cause it, it's, it's initially thoughts. Like, everybody has thoughts in their head. Everybody thinks, like, okay, that person is cute. Everybody thinks that. But the thing is, you can't act on your thoughts. Like, it's a thought. It's merely a temptation. Let that go in one ear and not the other. Like, don't don't fest on your thoughts. Once you fest on your thoughts and you cut the contemplation, that's when actions come in. And that's when the real cheating occurs. Like, cheating occurs first in the mind. Like, you know, there's no telling what's going through a person head. He could be cheating mentally, you know? He could be cheating mentally, thinking something, but like, as long as he don't act on it, then it's cool. But if you act on it, that means you just let your thoughts control you, man. And it's kind of a deal breaker, but I just, it's like I said, the situation, man. Cause it's like it's my wife and you just kiss somebody like damn but well, you my wife you just kiss them but it's like damn like shit <laughs> yeah marriage i feel like marriage is a whole another ordeal for like getting over certain situations of course like y'all said habitual cheater like mm, even one time like that could be the deal breaker for some people but uh, there are people who are out here who can get past those things like get to the root of like why did this happen and let's yeah. move past it especially like couples that have been together for times that they were in middle school to the time that they're 65 yeah. like it just comes with certain things and how you move past the situation or how something was done i feel like plays a big role in that because if you're out here just embarrassed to me blatantly oh, yeah. you don't care about me enough for me to be like oh let me try to figure this out with you like whatever but i feel like cheating in totality though it's a touchy subject because you, you, it's a whole bunch of factors that go into it. And people don't just, well, some people do just cheat. Let me not say that, actually. Yeah. Like, imagine you with your partner 15 years and, like, you know, they come out and say, like, yeah, I kiss somebody. Like, yeah, we're going to end these 15 years over, like, a kiss? Like, Jesus. You know, or what I mean? if you were with somebody and y'all were together for, say, 10 years and they tell you, like, oh, yeah, in our first year into our relationship, I did this. What would y'all do as far as like? Ooh, that would have to be like a really long, deep <laughs> discussion. Yeah. Yeah. It wouldn't be just like, I'm acting on this, I'm ending it at that point, especially 10 years. Because you got to think, 10 years, a lot can happen. Like, mm-hmm. kids can be involved, obviously, a marriage is there, or just 10 years and being in a relationship. Like, there's so much going into that. Like, for you to just end it off with one statement that happened early on in your relationship you, without talking about it, that's that's a little hasty. Oh man, I see what y'all are saying. If it's just like a little kiss, you know what I'm saying, cool. But if I find out like another dude, like he done raw dog my lady, like and just gave her the business bird, I'm gonna be sick, man. I ain't gonna lie to you. Definitely. But even if a kiss is what does it for you, you're entitled to feel how you want to feel about whatever happens. Like, even if a kiss is what broke the deal for you, that's what broke the deal for you. Yeah. It don't even have to go that far. Because for a lot of people, kissing is, like, just as intimate as having sex. Yeah. Or damn near as intimate, so. I'm just challenging y'all to, you know, of course you can be mad, but once the emotions get out of the way, because once you're emotional, you might not think logical or, like, even real intelligent. 
So once the emotions get done and you just think about the situation as a whole lot, just trying to drop it, just, just try to understand where that person came from. And that's where the conversation comes in. Now, you might not want to talk to them for, for however long. And it's your, that's your right, right? You're a man. And you don't want to come mad or, you know, emotionally talking to them, especially then, because you might not be talking honestly. Going off of that, do y'all feel like every relationship has to have bad trials and tribulations? No. Mm, well, like, wait, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, like because when people so people be like, you know, relationships have trials and tribulations. Oh, you pick this oh. and that, this that, and the third. Not specifically cheating, but just in general. Do y'all believe that every relationship has to have bad trials and tribulations? I mean, every relationship has it, but for the people that use that as an excuse to stay in relationships that are full of it, they're full of shit. Like, right. that's that's not right. Like, you're subjecting yourself to nonsense and trying to back it up with nonsense. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> I'm good. Yeah, 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 he took the word out of my mouth. Yeah. Thoughts on open relationships. Hell no. <laughs> I'm so selfish. selfish. It would never work. That's <laughs> right. It's I had Siri ask me that actually. Over the summer, I had a guy come up to me, hit on me, and I was actually in Hawaii. He said to me, You live on almost the other side of the world. And I'm looking for a relationship. I'm 26 years old. This is my job. Would you like to date and potentially in a couple of years get married we could have an open relationship that way you can have sex on your side of the world i can have sex on my side of the world and we can both profit off of my six-figure income uh, <laughs> that's more of a contract than a relationship. <laughs> like he told me his whole yeah. life story yeah, everything genetics everything and i was like this is a very tempting offer as a college
But that that first one's not fucking. Yeah, yeah. that first one. That, that, that you you downgrade from relationship to friend. Yeah. That. Even with they, the fertility ordeal, it's just like your first instinct. Granted, yes, it's a situational thing. It's a very un ideal situation but your first instinct isn't oh because i can't get you to have a child or i can't carry a child <clears throat> for you then you go have sex with somebody else there's so many other measures yeah, clinics like adoption, surrogate, adoption like it's it's not that becomes a contracted situation where you figure out how y'all gonna get a kid not you go knock somebody up or I go let somebody knock me up and then we come back and we reconvene. Yeah, because I feel like at that point it's kind of like we'll bring more drama into it. It's like, dang, somebody and like, oh, this is right. And it's just like a lot. These are just some situations. Oh, yeah, like, no. like people that I know who have gone through these situations. That's what I want. Man, that's enough. I would know, you know, people, you know, some women could have wives so they like the husbands or the kings would sleep with they like neighbors. Yeah, but they ain't had the, the mm-hmm. medical advances. Like, you got mm-hmm. artificial dissemination now, you know what I'm saying? It's mm-hmm. and everything. And Surrogate. Yeah, that's Surrogate. And that's yeah. for that first part, fuck no. Like my nigga said, my fault. Like my boy said earlier, <laughs> sex is a sport. I'm a competitor. You gonna come today. You may not come the first round. You gonna come the next one, though. Like, we, <laughs> so we, we, we both finishing, okay? Like, do dating apps work? Oh, no, I can't do it. Right? I ain't never been on one. I ain't never been on one. I feel like I use them just because like, I was bored. So I was just like, let me just talk to people. But I get bored easily. So I feel like dating apps wasn't working for me because they were just boring. I'm like, you're doing too much or you're not doing enough. It was just something like to do. So I feel like it didn't really work. Cause I feel like if that's the case, I can go on Instagram and like slide in somebody's DMs. Like, I'll do that. I mean, not now, but I'll do it if I want it before. So I just feel like it's just better ways than any of I feel like people really want to love, they would go seek it in person. I feel like a lot of people would be on day and they're just doing that because they think it's like easy sex or something. I was going to say from, I have never signed up for a dating app, but seeing like people that I've been around use dating apps, it was never for long, like longevity. It was for a quick, oh, let's go do this tonight or Let's do whatever they doing, but it never came with longevity. Granted, you have people out there who find it, love their life, phone dating apps. But like personally, seeing it happen, mm-mm. the idea of it, it's like, what's the point when it comes to, especially at our age in this college town, because everybody knows everybody. You see the same people all the time. So as far as dating apps down here, no. Okay. Do y'all think it's unladylike to ask a guy out? No. Nah. Yeah, no. Take me out. Do what you want. Right. Do what you want. Go pursue it. Steak dinner and some prosecco. Go ahead. So, do y'all prefer that? Like, do you prefer to approach, or do you prefer to be approached? Or just, like, how do y'all feel about that? I'm cool with either or, but a woman asking me out, I find it very attractive because it shows that she's confident and assertive, and it also shows that like in a way that she's not confined by the general norms. And that's really like refreshing and reassuring because something that I try to strive to do with like a lot of women that I'm close with is like reassure them and give them confidence to do things that generally aren't accepted by women. Like, I know this is kind of going back, but when it comes to hooking up, like I'm gonna dap up my homegirl, like I dap up my my dog when she gets home, like for sure, get yours in. So yeah, that's just one of my what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> the first part was, was is it unladylike to ask a guy out? And then I had asked, like, what was your preference? Do you prefer to approach or do you mind if a girl approaches you? Oh, I prefer to approach a woman. I'm not saying, just like in all my experiences that a woman has tro- approached me, um, it really just didn't lead or go anywhere besides um, like sexual encounters. I don't know if that's like due to me or that's due to her. But like most women approach me like not on the try to get to know me, just to try to you know like, do the hookup. You feel me? So that's usually where I go. But like if I really approach a woman like on some grown man, like yeah, we if I'm like asking you to go out on a date, I'm I see something in you that I would try to pursue. Okay, last question: Why do y'all love the naked truth? <laughs> <laughs>
I can go first. Uh, <laughs> you know, just for my just my second experience on the show, but you know, I feel like we're having a conversation that needs to be had. You know, about campus, about the right topics, and you know, especially like it's not just dedicated to you know black people. It's all races. You know, it's kind of I would have never met these people before, like especially y'all too. I would have never met y'all. I think I knew everybody else in the room, but. Like, I'm meeting new people, I'm building new networking, and we just get to talk about and have dialogue about numerous amount of topics, and I love that y'all provide the opportunity. For me, it's exactly what he said, but also the quality, like, that y'all put forth, like, y'all so legit, you know, with me, you know, being a part of the radio show, part of my world move, like, we always talking about naked truth and looking up to y'all and stuff like that, like, y'all the big sisters of this, like, <laughs> I want to try to keep it up for sure. And for me, it's like easily relatable. So, of course, you know, people my age having the conversations and not something I see on TV or something like that. I get you up like, Lydia, when the next show, what y'all talking about, like <laughs> stuff like that. Um, so, just having that that connection and just being able to relate, I feel like, is what I like about it. Yeah, definitely, I agree. Y'all know how to, y'all know how to intrigue y'all's targeted audience. Like, y'all know what y'all's audience wants to see, and y'all give them that. Yeah, totally. Like, really, like, for me personally, it's like a thing of, like, when I first met you, it, it was like, you didn't talk a lot, especially in comparison to the people you were around. And I was just, like, intrigued by that, because normally when I meet people, they talk a lot. And, like, seeing you and meeting Mel through you and seeing how y'all conversate and how y'all actually articulate ourselves. That's like been the biggest thing for me. So that's why I really like the show. Lydia's <laughs> like, like, I sure do be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I feel like even knowing y'all for as long as I've known y'all, y'all were completely different before the show. So it's like, I feel like I like it too to see y'all talents like come out and say, okay, this is what y'all want to talk about. This is where y'all going in your life. So it's really cool to see because I knew y'all like for a very long time. And then when y'all started doing it, I'm like, okay. Like y'all really like it. And y'all show in the effort that y'all put and the talent that y'all have, it reflects in y'all um, show. So it's really good to see. I mean, honestly, I don't really know about the Naked Truth until like a couple weeks ago. So I started checking you guys out because somebody recommended you. And this is my first time hanging out with you. So I thought it was a great experience. And y'all are all really nice. And y'all offered me alcohol. So <laughs> <laughs> I was having a great time. And I mean, it's a great show. And like all your stuff that I've seen on Instagram and stuff, y'all really uplift other people. And like on your show, everything you talk about, it's just great. Yeah, I've had a really good time today just hanging out, meeting people, talking to them, you know. A good time, and uh, I really appreciate the opportunity for being able to, you know, come and be a part of it. Hey, oh, nice. <laughs> oh, guys.